Hello, our friends, Evolutionary Energy Arts family. Hello there. Welcome back. Welcome back, guys. <clears throat> good morning to everybody out there that's watching this in the morning, and good afternoon, good evening as well. Yes, happy morning, happy day. Grand rising. Grand rising, yep. Yeah, having a cup of absolutely perfect black coffee. And, um, you know, this is, well, Cindy has a little bit of coffee in her cream. I, I do, and as long as I can taste a little bit of coffee, it's good. Yeah, absolutely. So we were talking about the magic, the and people will use this term here, voodoo. Um, we could get into, and, and maybe we should go into the specifics of, you know, different types of magic, voodoo, Santeria, with all this talk about the uh, the migrants in you know from a particular area coming in, and as you see here, three cats found mutilated in Houston's East End, bodies cut in half, paws missing, missing limbs. Um, yes, uh, things like this can be used in black magic and and voodoo. Absolutely, that is true. Officials are at stunned at who this could possibly be. As you know, there's all these rumors going around, and again, you know, there's been rumors time after time of certain things. And you know, give it a little while, and no longer will they be rumors. <laughs> uh, we understand we have to fact check the fact checkers in this world all the time because the facts are, uh, again, uh, they are always hidden when it's inconvenient. And that word there ties us directly to Al Gore, right? Inconvenient truth. Well, the inconvenient truth is, Al, your prophesying is, is not very accurate at all. And we found there's not too much in this world that's accurate when you really get down to the system that's running, this, running things. But when we look at what is the actual definition of magic? Well, you know, again, these things change too. These, and... Um, Pointing at the, I'm pointing at the screen. <laughs> Not that you guys can see what I'm pointing to. Um, this is one thing I've noticed over the years: is the very definitions in our dictionaries are always changing too, to a slight degree. This really is just like the movie 1984. If you haven't watched the movie 1984 yet. Yeah, set aside a couple hours, go take a look at it, and uh, you know you get get the idea of how this is. It's constantly ongoing, the revision. But the art of practice of using charms, spells, or rituals to attempt to produce supernatural effects or control events in nature. The charm, spells, rituals, so use the exercise of sleight of hand or conjuring as in making something see this appear for entertainment. A mysterious quality of enchantment. These are as a noun, as an adjective of relating to or invoking the supernatural. Possessing distinctive qualities that produce unaccountable or baffling effects. And then as a transitive verb to produce alter or cause by or as if by magic so there they're actually using magic to define magic which is in its in itself kind of stupid but uh, again to cause to disappear you know it's 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 the art of using intention to create a conformity in a physical sense to that which you are visualizing, that which you want to achieve, that which you want to manifest. This is always happening with the control system working its magic on humans. And it's just that most humans, unfortunately, have been you know, mindlessly walking through life, not aware of anything going on around them. And I just wanted to share this post from Peter. Uh, Peter is one of our family members. He's been watching on uh, just at this time Patreon as he says, I'm watching your videos, Mike and Cindy, just not on YT anymore. And yes, even here in Poland, as he is our translator for uh, Christoph. And I want to thank him again for his translations because he'll give us detailed translations uh, going more into uh, the psychic uh, Christoph his predictions for what's coming and we've known peter for years 
And he says, yes, even here in Poland, I encounter more and more people questioning the narrative, but they're still scratching their heads in confusion or disbelief. At least there's some progress. Funny story, my ex-wife recently found out that I started dabbling in Reiki. She's a hardcore Catholic, so she said she's afraid for my soul and prays often that I drop this black magic nonsense and return to the church for forgiveness and repentance, as you can see the cracking up faces there. There are so many things I wanted to say to her, but I decided to bite my tongue for the most part. She even told me not to comment because she knew I had different view, but yeah, she commented. And when I asked her what was so wrong, she never responded. I just told her to stop bashing uh, her belief system on a dogma and ideology based on fear, or basing, I should say, basing her belief system on, on dogma and ideology based on fear, and left it at that. Oh, well, we all have our own path. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And this is where it is. This is where it is. This is where so many people live. Um, they don't even know why they would say something it's just they've been trained to. They've been indoctrinated to. They, they haven't even run through the logical lines of thinking when you start to question something and start to put together, well, well, why wouldn't they want me doing these things? Didn't Jesus say, why are you marveling at my healings? You're going to do greater than I did? How could that possibly be if he is the one and only son of the creator? You know, there's there's just no logically putting things together, no feeling into anything, just fear-based blind acceptance. Mm -hmm. and, and like Mike said, this is where so many of our, our family members are with relationships, some separated, some still living with their partner, and one uh, going through an awakening and the other just still stuck still in their their uh, very firm belief system but y you realize uh, you know we were talking earlier and we were bringing up more information about this and and talking about the pot calling the kettle black and and uh you know those who really curse something like you know reiki and and pranic healing don't really understand what their own belief system has done to force people to believe what they believe in the past they're, they're so blindly putting it out there. And I think we have to guard against that. We really do because it, it, that's where we become blinded and we simply walk down a path and we, we don't even know why we're walking down it. And pretty soon we stop questioning why am I walking down this path? And then you just, you go off a cliff. And, and that's what we're trying to help people s stop. We, we don't want to see people go there. And, and uh, it, it is a really sad thing when somebody actually loses their life because they themselves and those around them were blinded to the other ideas and other healing modalities that could have could have saved them. Yeah, it, it is so sad. I mean, all you have to do is is look at the complete bloody history of, of the Catholic Church because it is steeped in blood uh, and it, it, it's it's so deep and there are so many atrocious acts that have been committed in the name of the catholic church you know and and if you think that they are saints you know well again this is the revisionist history um yeah many people don't know that the catholic church took the side of the nazis uh, initially in 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 world war ii but you know that's nothing compared to the inquisition or the fact that there were groups that broke away and were, and this is exactly what that Genesis 11 uh, Tower of Babel thing is. Again, it, it, it was about a group that was not conforming and not conforming and, and the system, you know, basically um, took care of that. And this is, you know, again, part of where people just don't understand what's really going on as you see a lot of people that have done some deep dives you know and there is a lot of good research like done on reddit a lot of people share their their info on reddit um and you know it's it's a good place to go or i mean i before all this and before i started the youtube channel 
I, I was used to getting into debates with people on uh, different forums. And it was fun because it, it just led to you know more deep dives and, and uncovering more and more inconsistencies and incongruities and things that, you know, again, many people will run into and say, well, this doesn't really make sense. Why is this the way it is? But then they just will often just leave it at that. And, and this person right here, over the last 2,000 years, the church has murdered over 300 million plus uh, even other uh, atrocious acts. Yeah, absolutely. There's no denying this. Um, there is no denying this. Uh, ultimately, you know, we, we've shared some of the, the practices that were done when the conquistadors first um, landed in Hispaniola and in other places, you know, here in the Western Hemisphere, they read a decree that came from the church that basically said, you know, hey, we are taking uh, possession of everything that you own, including yourselves, and we might use you as slaves, under the authority of the church, because the church has said that this is what God wants. Now, you cannot find a better example of exactly what's going on than that. Not in their language, yes. I mean, they're they're speaking in in Spanish, or they might have said it in in Latin, and these people don't know that language, so they didn't have a clue of what was said to them. All they know is all of a sudden, they're stealing our gold, they're stealing our food, they're stealing our females, and then they're killing them indiscriminately. This this is exactly what. Uh, is the true history uh, of of Christianity and the Catholic Church uh, upon uh, the indigenous people of the world? We see it repeated in in many different locations around the world on a regular basis. It's the system. It's <clears throat> it's what the system does, and yet the system is always doing its black magic. You want to talk about black magic? You, you know, you look at the Eucharist. Look at the the symbolism, this is my body, this is my blood, that sounds pretty damn dark to me. That that sounds, you know, very much like, you know, symbolizing again a blood sacrifice. And and yet, you know, they say, well, there was one blood sacrifice, so there doesn't have to be any more blood sacrifices. But again, they've backed wars. Onward Christian soldiers, you know, the whole concept, you know, uh, of, of that is exactly the opposite of some of the teachings of, of the person Yeshua Jesus, who, again, when we look at the construct of Yeshua Jesus, is not, you know, what, what was the reality. And, you know, it was based on several different people in reality, um, several different people, one of whom was uh, w being waited on by the Essenes, who were a group that understood that the system is pretty evil and they wanted to kind of separ separate themselves from the system. And so they did live outside of the major cities. They did interact where they had to. They bartered and traded and, you know, did things very much perhaps like, again, you know, the Amish do. You know, they're, they're here, they're in the United States, but they, they do their own thing kind of up on the outside. They, they only interact where they have to. And this is how the Essenes were. And the Essenes were waiting for multiple teachers of righteousness. And they knew that there was somebody that was due at a certain time. And, you know, they were basically waiting for the individual that we know as Yeshua, who, in our point of view, um, again, was more of what we would call in these days and ascended master in days gone by in, in the hindu world we would call him like a rishi uh yeah he was somebody that just had a, a lot of understanding and he didn't like the system at all and again the system took the real yeshua combined it with many other stories from uh from our past and created this, uh, what we have, you know, this whole concept of original sin and blood sacrifice, which is given to us by the same sort of cast of characters as we see running the WHO, the CDC, um, you know, the UN, uh, the Catholic Church at this point in time, your popes, etc. This video we did three years ago, 
and it was the healings of Jesus Yeshua and how we can do even greater things. William Lorand is is well known in Reiki circles. Um, you know, it's interesting. I I saw my old Reiki teacher who now is in assisted living, um, and because she's in her nineties. Uh, she's way up there, uh, but it was shining bright light that never um, could see darkness in anything. She was always putting, you know, the light spin on everything. <clears throat> and she was adorable. She was, you know, such a cute old lady, you know, and stuff. And uh, just very, very positive. So, you know, seeing her go off into the assisted living now. Um, but she's putting her positive spin on it as always. And it is, it is really about how we view the challenges in life. Um, but she used to love to talk about Yeshua, Jesus, and, and how he was, you know, a, a, a Reiki practitioner. Now, again, we can use these different labels. You know, Reiki is actually a Japanese system um, that was supposedly rediscovered, had been used a long time ago. Uh, in the past and was rediscovered and brought into our times by a doctor and yet Reiki might be maybe the most well known here in the US um, but there's other forms I always gravitated a little bit to the pranic healing side and certainly to the medical qigong side there are some differences between these practices and when you get into medical qigong it's as it's like going to med school it, it very much uh, there's an awful lot to learn you do learn the organ systems you do learn the meridians and the pathways the reservoirs of energy and in, in the body you do learn specific techniques um, to go after certain ailments you do the same thing in, in pranic healing as well pranic healing especially uses series of colors in order and again that's visualization how can your visualization of colors really affect the physical body oh it does <laughs> it really does because again on the quantum level everything is just waiting for your consciousness to activate it and to trigger it into manifesting this is part of what they don't want people understanding this this whole universe which is one of of an infinite number of universes it's all for you it literally is all for you to explore you know it's it's such a different concept than you're here you're created to serve as slaves some other entity no you're not slaves you are creators in fact you can go so far beyond what the system can do and this is how you know i do think that the saying uh that you will do greater things would be something the real historical uh jesus yeshua would say every time we go there when we get into that talk about about source and how everything is for you i i, get, I always get so emotional um just because I experienced it, I, I talked to Source, and it it was so real, you know, just uh, texting a friend yesterday, and she sent me some information about this back and forth talk with God, and um, the talk that we have is, is so real that I, I can't get over that, how much Source is just like talking to me talking to my husband, me talking to my children, me talking to someone who is wise. I mean, the information just bounces right back to you the way you put it out there. So I, I cannot stress enough. What you put out comes back. So your intention, your ideas, everything that you do, you send out to the world it is going to come back to you because that's how source works that's how source talks to you it is this back and forth communication with the whole world with all the consciousness and yes it is all for you if you can sit with that and imagine that and imagine the love that comes from this this being because it is a being and and everything that you see around you your 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 pets your tv your computer your tablet your phone you know even if you're having a hard time and especially if you're having a hard time know that that is for growth know that that is for love 
and you have to sit with that and you have to trust it and when you get to that point you rise up and above it and you can look down and see oh okay well that's why that had to happen and that really stunk but you know what i grew i grew i look back and i grew so um when i when i work on people it is a conversation between uh, myself and them and their higher self their guides their angels so mike has a lot of the uh, book reading which is very very necessary i have a lot of the intuition so i look at the person i look at the aura i look at the blocks and we have this conversation between all of us this person that we're working on and we work through things and we figure things out and we adjust the energy field to whatever they need and it, it's always with the good intention of this person being healed. And, and when Mike and I, we work on ourselves, I mean, we eat very, very clean. Uh, we are very careful about what comes into our energy field. And we're very careful if we watch a scary movie. I mean, we take care of ourselves. We sage, we bathe, <laughs> we do what it takes to get our vibration back up. So it's this very deliberate uh note that we hold through life to hold that higher vibration so that we when we do work on people their vibration is going to rise up to our vibration so their intentions our intentions are that that person heals and i can't tell you how important that is our intention is key so we can look at things like prayer we can look at things like uh what we're doing uh reiki healing pranic healing we can look at things like what you might call uh, quantum manifestation all of this energy it, it might get argued about about what it is but you guys it's the same it's the same energy and we all have access to it because we're human we're human beings here in this human body and we can all do these amazing works and yeshua jesus did them and he's come here to try to tell us and his words do echo through time that hey you can do this too and and you can absolutely you know if you go on ee arts over here you'll see i just put in jesus and you can see we, we've done many 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 uh videos on you know jesus yeshua the real yeshua jesus and also on the bible and this goes all the way back to the beginning of the of the channel so if you're talking really, um, <laughs> you know, how many videos? Uh, probably close to 100, you know, I would say. There's 55 videos over here. This is uh, the evolutionary energy arts, uh, an alternate look at the Bible. Yeah, there's 55 just on this playlist, and, and this is evolutionary, again, the original channel. Uh, and over here, you know, in the arts, there's a ton. And then if you go over to Hearts Home, uh, the third channel, uh, there's 13 videos over here on um, Yeshua, including our channelings where Cindy did go into a trance and Yeshua came through. And that, ha that has happened multiple times. So Yeshua is, is one of our guides in, in reality. Um, when I, I first realized Yeshua was one of my guides, it was when I was working on people and I had, um, one, one lady had a vision and I remember it, uh, so clearly because that's when my energy changed uh, instead of like this gentle magnetic energy coming out of my hands, it turned very electric and it was as if somebody had put their hands on my shoulders and I was working on the person energetically and uh, you know she was an elderly lady and her eyes opened wide and she was just staring straight up at the uh, the ceiling and then she uh, had a vision and she saw her parents greet her uh, from the other side and they told her don't fear anything because you know she was elderly and kind of getting ready to transition herself and they came to um, tell her there's nothing to fear about. They'll be right there on the other side. And she saw Yeshua um, sit down into me, uh, which, you know, <laughs> it freaked her out. And so it was something uh, that really um, at first was disconcerting. But then, you know, she realized the vision was positive and he was a conduit and he was connecting 
um, her in so many ways to her parents on the other side to give her reinsurances. Um, when you look at Reiki and the principles, and you'll have people say, you know, as Peter's uh, ex-wife there is saying black magic, okay, what are the Reiki principles? Its philosophy of Reiki is rooted in five principles. And these are uh, given for guidance, healing, and balancing. And just for today, I release angry thoughts. How is that black magic? I mean, hello, you know, it, it, wake up and smell the coffee. People are so fear-based conditioned. They're terrified of burning forever. Well, newsflash, when you don't have a body, you don't feel heat like that. You know, this is just something we know. We, we know this for a fact, and people will say, how do you know this for a fact? Well, a combination of things. When you are used to experiencing consciousness in a different way, uh, such as being able to shift your perception, gain control of what you call lucid dreaming, uh, and being able to actually move outside the body, recognize that you're outside of the body, and your consciousness is such that you know uh, that you're in what you might call a dream state, but you're aware of the dream state. And you know you might be aware that I don't really have a body anymore, and you 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 know you're just exploring the astral realm. This this is the type of stuff that that comes with. Um, well, it, it depends on the individual because you know some people may have this without doing any work in this life, and that's because they've done work in the past lives. And, and so we we do bring these things forward. How does you know Cindy have the abilities that she has? Well, it's past life work. She's done a ton of past life work, and and it's the same thing with myself. And you know, in fact, I always was drawn uh, to especially Buddhist temples and, and Taoist philosophy, both both of those. And what I've discovered is almost every other incarnation that I have is is kind of in that setting as a monk to rebalance myself and to you know regain uh the soul's equilibrium so far uh so so i could be more um focused in the next life when i'm doing more of this type of thing and trying to help people understand the the bigger uh picture just for today i release thoughts of worry because again you know worry doesn't really help us we do need to be uh, certainly um, aware of things that can affect us, um, but we don't let it hit us and, and make us uh, always be sweating in fear and anticipation. And again, if our whole belief system is one that's grounded in fear of punishment, right away, where, where's the love in that? Where is the expansion in that? There is no expansion. Fear, if you notice, fear contracts. When you're afraid, you, you feel your energy pulling back into you. It's not expanding outward. It's withdrawing and pulling into you. When you feel feelings of love, you'll feel that expansion. And, and this is where people need to, to literally work on their feeling and sensing. Just for today, I'm grateful. Yeah, oh yeah, grateful. Uh, feelings of gratitude. Um, are, are very important for raising us up into the higher consciousness. Just for today, I expand my consciousness. Yes, knowingly expanding your conscious consciousness is very, very important. Knowing that you're, you're growing and focusing on growing and becoming a better version of you. And just for today, I'm gentle with all beings. If you're calling this black magic, then you're upside down, inside out, and you probably wouldn't be aware of what black magic is. It, it, you don't have a clue. You really don't have a single clue. Well, this is where fear just steps in and, and it does take over. Um, and a lot of times through growing up and just listening to our parents and not really doing the study ourselves we step into fear um you know I, I i used to go to church because i wanted to do the right thing and i just listened to what they said and i was very much spoon-fed the information and and i didn't expand on myself 
But then I, I kept wondering, it's like, gosh, you know, Cindy, you, uh, why why are you so curious about astrology? That's not right. Gosh, Cindy, why are you so curious about this deck of tarot cards? Come on, just let it go. And guess I could not let it go. I could not let it go. It, it was this part of me, this uh, <laughs> part of me that wanted to explore consciousness. And I started asking myself, why is it so terrible? Why is it so terrible if I want to know? Who says? Well, it's because the people at church say, well, what authority do they truly have? You know, they're not walking in my shoes. They're not feeling what I feel. They're just reading this information about a book. And by the way, what's in this book? And I started getting curious about that. So then I started learning that the Bible is not an original story at all. It, it comes from, you know, much older, <laughs> older works and uh it's just sort of kind of thrown together and and has a stamp on it saying this is from god and i didn't think that that was fair so i had my own journey we all do and that was mine but uh so much of this you know people get sick and so many people die because uh they're not expanding themselves to different healing modalities we have a very dear 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 family member who has a very strong intuition and a very strong sense of being able to hear her guides voices and she was in the doctor's office and the doctor was telling her one thing but her guides were telling her no you need to do this other thing and had she been you know just through a fundamentalist standpoint and shunned those voices that she was hearing from her guides and angels she may have died she may have died so in that sense, that's how I, I feel that religion can be very dangerous to your health if you're just going to shun everything. I mean, information comes into your field for a reason. It's really important to take a look. Yeah, absolutely. You know, this is showing uh, the different meridians and the different organ systems. Again, m medical qigong is extremely involved. Uh, there's a lot of memorization, a lot of learning, and it, it, understanding, again, how our, our body really works, because it, it works. Everything is really top-down. So when you affect the energy, uh, it'll seep through and sink into the body. Here, you're, you're showing the daily course, of 12 main meridians with the related organs you know so if you look at it and you see the liver over there around 3 uh, 3 a.m. and the lung at 5 a.m. again uh, the dominant energy with the dominant organ system is different as the day turns on there's a lot of symbolism that many people um, are totally totally most people are totally unaware of you know, even in the Bible, there is there there are nuggets for the initiated. Uh, yet, I think that you could do a lot more learning in other areas. You know, just studying Kabbalah and Hermeticism, studying um, if you know the, for those that are so ingrained in the Western system, you want to feel still a little bit comfortable. You could go into uh, the Hermetic side of things, the Gnostic, the Kabbalah. If you know you're already kind of non-dogmatic, and uh, you're ready for more, then absolutely go into uh, the Taoist point of view, or you could also go into um, the Vedic world as well. This uh, is one of five books by Jerry Allen Johnson that a lot of, um, well, as far as Qigong teachers here in the Western world. Uh, these are kind of foundational ones. Uh, each one is, I don't know, seven, eight hundred pages. Uh, there's five of them. They usually, when they're available, are a hundred bucks or more. Um, and they're not always available. They're hard to find. Um, but they're very, very exhaustive. Um, there's a lot of other uh, good authors out there. Uh, you, you know, Mantak Chia has a lot of um, works out there you can uh, find and in going into his healing uh, Tao system, Mantak Chia, uh, Dr. Yang Jingming, uh, many others. Uh, you know, g again, e expand your horizons. Morei Yushiba is the founder of Aikido, and he wrote this book, The Art of Peace. Uh, Aikido was developed for uh, the samurai to disarm people like if they didn't have their sword on them uh, and how would you uh, disable somebody attacking you with a sword uh, you know Akito is a beautiful 
uh, art. And it's in many ways a gentle art, even though you can end up throwing people and doing different holds and joint locks. Um, but understanding the, the philosophy behind it, this is Goren no Show, Miyamoto Musashi, who was uh, the greatest, probably uh, historically the greatest samurai, or Sasaki Kojiro, who he had some battles with. Um, it, it's, it's taught in business, uh, the Book of Five Rings. This is taught in business uh, all around the world, but yes, absolutely in Japan. You know, opening up your mind and expanding uh, it, you know, one of the biggest blessings for me was, you know, my mom allowing me as a kid to go to martial arts classes because it really did open me up to um, the Eastern philosophies, which made a heck of a lot more sense to me in a non-dogmatic way. And that's the thing. They've used the dogma to control us here in the West. It's, it's, it's controlled through dogma. Why is that the case and not the case in the East? Well, because the Western way of things has been uh, what's controlled uh, the reality in our, our world. As we saw the colonialism of the European countries, which again, controlled by these monarchies working with the papacy, you know, for so much of our history here, uh, to control reality, to get people to conform to their dogmatic Western ways. It's all about the system. And we'll do more going deeper into uh, quote unquote magic and energy work. And, you know, again, we're doing energy work. Aren't we doing magic? Well, yeah, again, we're we're changing the energy body and knowing that when we change and, and make the energy body come into alignment, the physical body has a much better chance of adapting to that pattern. As when we look at conception, and we've talked about this before, uh, what happens is there's a pattern on, on the etheric. The etheric is, um, you could think of it as an energetic layer closest to the, to the physical. And the etheric template is what the body grows up to. It is literally the blueprints uh, of the body to come as the sperm and the egg come together. What, how do they know what pattern to go into? It's the energy that is not visible to many, um, but visible to some. It's the energy pattern that's there. And, and everything, all the information, like DNA, again, DNA is not just in our, our body. It's also uh, an energy form as well. So this is stuff that you know many people don't understand. But when you do understand this, then really we look at the Western system and, and we understand that it's, it's pretty silly because it doesn't uh, take anything into account that's really critical to understand. And, and again, it's, it's done through fear-based um, dogmatic uh, approach. Mm -hmm. When you uh, repattern that energy field, like Mike said, it gives the physical body a much better chance to take on that new pattern and heal itself so very very important to uh, go go into it understanding that when you are healing your intention has got to be there and then um, for for example uh, working on someone's throat chakra if I do see blocks in there I, I'm gonna have this conversation with someone it's like I see blocks do you want me to remove them if they say yes then I need to go over okay what are the implications of removing them because there are you know there are things and one of the biggest ones is somebody is the person who has the blocks removed they're going to be speaking their truth so if you're in a situation and you have really been holding back whether it be work relationship whatever you're going you're not going to be able to really resist and sit on your throat chakra because your throat chakra now the blocks are removed now it's time to heal so we've removed the blocks now you're getting all the information you need to heal but what does that mean also it means you you're going to have to look at your life and make some adjustments and in western medicine they just don't do that they say oh here you know doctor what's wrong well this is wrong here take this pill so i only have to take this pill and i don't have to make any life changes western doctor no just take this pill and that's not healing <laughs> it's not 
healing. And that's what we do here in the West. We just uh, continually put a lid on it and put a lid on it. And some, if someone has emotional problems, uh, depression, you know, maybe they're going through dark night of the soul. All they're going to do is just keep feeding pills until that person feels better. And they're going to keep telling that person, oh, here, this will make you feel better. Come back and see me in three weeks. And if it doesn't work, oh, here, let's up the dose. This will make you feel better. Come back and see me in three weeks. And the person's not changing anything at home. They're not changing diet. They're not changing the way that they live. That's not healing. And and no, I haven't seen a lot of progress that way through the Western medicine. So we do really get uh, deep in into someone's life and understanding. And that's what the talking is about. Even the spiritual coaching that's about getting into the nitty-gritty and, and asking someone okay what's the problem here and then talking about it and finding a solution about it and changing what you eat changing what you put into your body into your energy field all of that is healing absolutely and this is on EER, EER arts um this is the more complete um Lineup. There's 58 videos there of healing through energy work, qigong, meditation. Very, very powerful practices. You know, the dark side. They, they really, they've done a lot to uh, keep us from reaching people, and they actually hacked into um, our our website here, evolutionaryenergyarts.com. And they took away all our testimonials, which I had some backed up. So, you know, there are some testimonials here and you can read them for what we have done with some people that are down on the main main uh, page, evolutionaryenergyarts.com. Um, I had Facebook, uh, which uh, I did have a Facebook uh, and it got taken down by Facebook because I was sh sharing too much alternative health and healing um and i had a thousand recommendations about up there uh as far as energy work and they just shut it down and and i didn't have it backed up so that was a bad on me um but it is what it is you know we we know um we know what we're doing and and we have no doubts at all zero doubts you know about you know the reality being dogmatic and and the, the use of dogma as a divisive tool on on humanity you know every now and then you'll get somebody that says oh you really got to come back to jesus it's like you don't understand that's a construct that's multiple people that they've used along with a created storyline uh, to to create a fear-based system based on blood sacrifice and the concept of uh, original sin and you know that's not the reality that that's the controller's you know story so no we're never gonna it's like when you know Santa Claus and the Easter Bunny story how are you ever gonna really go back as an adult to believing in Santa Claus and the Easter Bunny you understand the spirit of Christmas and you understand the spirit of renewal but you can never go back into that box once you once you step out of the box it, it just it makes no spiritual sense at all why would i want to constrict myself into something that's so uh limiting yeah no this is all about expansion this is not about uh, restricting and constricting and look at this little one look at her <laughs> you know again yeah they make us think that goats are an evil thing because they have their representation of baphomet and you know all the dark stuff they give us all this symbolism by the way you'll find uh pictures uh and statues of george washington in exactly the same position as baphomet is it by accident no there's no accidents the system, you know, they're all black magicians. And when you look at the Catholic Church, uh, yeah, absolutely. Perhaps one of the biggest black magic organizations ever on the planet, at least in our particular uh, era of, you know, resets. Uh, the reality is, again, you have source in you. You don't need any dogma at all. And that's one of the things I love about Taoism, uh, really, Um 
you know, Taoism doesn't really have the dogma that you see. It's not even really uh, a religion. It's more of a philosophy. Um, and again, religion has been, you know, one of the number one tools that have been used to control the minds of humanity through fear-based indoctrinated beliefs. So we really don't need any um, dogma. We really, really don't need any religion. Uh, it's, it's up to the individual. Uh, you know, again, we should be living a spiritual life. What does that spiritual word really, really mean? When you talk about spiritual warfare, we're really talking about the fact that this is a multi-dimensional uh, um, battle that's going on, on on more than one density. Again, when we're asleep or if we're in a meditative state, typically we are in what we would call the astral realm, the fourth density, so to speak. And, and right now the planet is ascending. Uh, so, you know, our reality is changing rapidly. And at some point in time, you know, the system knows it cannot go on. It, and this, its time is short. So it, it wants people to voluntarily give their power away and perhaps even voluntarily leave the earth and go to places that won't be ascending so they could still be slaves for the system. Mm -hmm. It is so much easier if you can just get people to go along and just do it, you know, <laughs> instead of fighting them. And that's something our control system has discovered. And they they put a great effort in getting people to simply comply. And um, it's unfortunate. It's unfortunate because we are free beings. Uh, we are expansion. We are life. We are love. And uh, we have choices. Absolutely. This is why we say source bless, because, you know, this is the clarity. Too many beings have been called gods. And, you know, you may be, again, giving your power away to a dark entity, thinking you're, you know, accessing the light, but you're actually doing the exact opposite. So source bless and namaste. We look forward to your comments and questions. Namaste.